Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today I have another gun store vlog for you where I will be making some market predictions moving forward, specifically in regards to the election. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with a recap of what we have seen so far in terms of demand in the marketplace. So going back to February, March, we have the insurgents or the, the, the buildup of the scare around this virus that's going on. That was our uh, first big wave of the panic buying. Our primary buyer in that instance was a new first time gun buyer, people who were not armed, who wanted firearms for protection in the home. Now that would last for about a month when the cases and everything started to decline. As a gun store owner, you know, we started seeing our people visiting the store, people making purchases starting to drop off pretty quick as the sort of the uncertainty and the animosity was sort of rolling downhill. At the time that we're seeing demand drop back down, I start to see inventory levels start to rise pretty quickly back up. I'm starting to get in case quantity ammunition again, uh, a good healthy supply of new firearms uh, coming in, especially things that have a higher demand and a lower price point, Taurus, G2Cs and Smith SD9VEs and things like that, AR-15s, that stuff was starting to really come back in. Then we have uh, all the rioting and the looting happen as a result of the death of George Floyd. Now we start seeing the, the fires and the pillaging and, and all the people uh, getting hurt with all the riots going on all over the country. And then a second wave of all the panic buying starts back up. And it's even worse in my opinion than the first. So uh, again, first time gun buyers, people who did not purchase firearms in the first wave of the panic buying are in, they're buying everything. I see a bigger mix of uh, gun owners, people who are more regulars in my store coming in, trying to get ammunition ahead of what they just saw happening. I think people by that point in time are starting to get a feeling that it's time to dig in. This is going to be more long-term than we had originally thought. Now, where we are now is I am starting to see, uh, again, purchasing from first-time buyers is really gone. I mean, I, I get a couple people now and then coming in, uh, maybe one in 10 people through the door as a first-time buyer trying to find something uh, for home defense or something like that, which is about normal uh, under normal circumstances, but it's mainly my regulars, people who I know have purchased before, people who are familiar with the, with the firearm market, who are tired of not being able to find ammunition. They're making their rounds every day, trying to get ammo where they can. Again, it's like 2013 all over again, if you guys remember that. That's where we are now. Supply is awful. I can't really get anything from my suppliers. I order inventory by just getting on the phone every day, listening to a small list of allocations they got in for the day mainly guns that are not that popular and then ammunition calibers that are not that popular. Occasionally I do get a good supply of nine, 223, 556, 762 by 39. Occasionally I get in like a SIG 365, Glock 17s, you know, things like that. But for the most part right now, it's pretty bad. We have second wave COVID starting to, to sort of come back up, propagating itself in the news again. Um, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of, of worry or doubt around that. I think people realize that they a little bit overreacted from the first wave, not saying that there weren't deaths and all that, and we should be careful, but people are taking it a little bit less seriously, I'm noticing, than they did the first go around. But the next big thing looming on the horizon is the election, and I think there is going to be big supply implications based on the result of that. Now. Are the results of the election or, or leading up to the election, are they going to be the same as they were in 2016? So let's back up and sort of use that as a benchmark for what I think is going to happen. So 2008 to 2016, we have President Obama in office right there in the middle at the re-election of uh, in 2012, right after President Obama's re-election, we have the Sandy Hook tragedy, which of course that layered with all the anti-gun rhetoric led many people to believe that gun control legislation, especially that revolving around AR-15s, assault style weapons, if you will, as the media likes to coin them, and the ammunition to go along with them, is going to be the target of sweeping gun control. So the, the purchasing of that stuff ramped up heavily. Again, we didn't have problems getting pump shotguns or anything like that like we do today, but the AR-15 market and ammunition market, especially 5.56, nine millimeter to some extent, it wasn't as dry as 5.56 was, or 22. And the whole thing, 22, kind of came as a second shock wave because people were trying to get the ammunition for training because all, you know, nine and five, five, six was so expensive and hard to get. I'm starting to see that happen now, by the way, as many people have predicted. So 22 is now starting to be the next animal that people are going after right now. So what we had as a result with that was a huge bulking up in the supply chain. So we had not only 
well, backing up, we had our primary manufacturers of AR-15 type stuff like Colt and Smith and Wesson and Bushmaster start to really build up the supply of things like that in the market. We start having new, what I call smaller boutique manufacturers entering the AR-15 market. Um, I mean, there's a ton of them now, but some of them are like Frank, uh, Franklin Army, I, don't, I guess they manufacture ARs. Uh, you have um, uh, Spikes Tactical, you have Aero Precision, you have Palmetto State Armory, you have uh, DPMS and uh, Diamondback. You know, all of those big names start to really pop up around the 2009, 2010, 11 uh, timeframe. That's when they start getting a lot of momentum. Parts building was really not a thing a lot of people did back in 2008 to 2010. That started really gaining popularity within the past decade. You know, 2010 to 2020 was when that really started taking off. The building community was very small, believe it or not. On top of that, even established manufacturers of things like uh, AR-15s like Ruger came out with the AR-556. You had Savage come out with the uh, the uh, MSR-15 and the MSR-15 Patrol and all those sorts of offerings. You had Springfield come out with the Saint line. So everybody's piling on the AR-15 market around that time uh, because of the huge heightened demand specifically in that category in firearms. Now you have all these manufacturers in the marketplace. You have all these parts and all this ammunition being built up, you know, federal and uh, you know all the different uh, ammo manufacturers are starting to really beef up their capacity, uh, their machinery, their personnel. Leading up to the election in 2016, most people thought Hillary Clinton was going to win. So what happened is uh, manufacturing of AR-15s and 556, predicting that the outcome would be the same from when President Obama was in office, is going to be, you know, the demand for those things is going to be highly elevated. So supply of that stuff was ramped up. Wholesalers totally beefed up on that type of inventory. Uh, even pricing for that stuff was actually increasing before the election even happened in anticipation of you know, a Hillary Clinton victory and the sales of those items to skyrocket. Retailers such as myself, I mean, I bought tons of ARs just in case, you know, because the demand for it was gonna be huge and the supply was gonna be very low. So we were getting ready for it and what happens? President Trump ends up winning. So President Trump wins and the market bottoms out, completely tanks. Uh, we see a drop in demand at about 30 percent and that's nearly overnight okay people are left with all this inventory at elevated prices that's the price you pay for taking a gamble on supply it's very normal um wholesalers uh retailers have tons of this stuff in stock you start seeing sales everywhere you start seeing uh, rebate promotions everywhere uh, everybody's trying to dump this inventory because all that supply existed in people's homes and people's closets under their beds all those ars they bought from 2008 to 2016 the used market got flooded with all that stuff so we saw really low pricing i mean really good quality ar-15s on sale for 399 that was the type of thing that we saw so what's going on now as a result well manufacturers are afraid that the outcome of the election oh, i shouldn't say afraid but they are suspecting that we have to be prepared for the outcome that president trump will be re-elected what does that mean that means supply is going to be very low of course many people are saying you know supply is so low right now and demand is so high why don't the manufacturers just scale up get more machinery get more personnel uh, increase their uh, their uh, production floor space you know invest 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 so your demand is here get stuff in the market well as we see from demand from uh, black swan events sort of things like the coronavirus and and demand from things like um, you know looting and rioting that stuff is usually pretty short term Again, after the first round of the virus, I already started seeing supply come back and demand go down. I'm already seeing now demand start to go down as a result of the rioting. So you don't want to increase all that capacity and, and put all that investment into things for a short, short term spike in demand. What I think is going to happen is if President and I'll, well, I'll get into this uh, kind of the outcome predictions here in a minute, but the manufacturers are c considering to themselves, in my opinion, and this is what I would be doing. Let's wait until the election, because if Joe Biden were to win, then we will definitely see a long period of demand increase. Okay, just like under President Obama, every, every time that there is a tragedy involving a firearm, of course, all the rhetoric and the war drum is go going to be hit, and everybody's going to say gun control, gun control, gun control, and demand is going to explode and sales are going to be high as we've seen this i mean you can only draw from the experiences in the past if president trump were to be re-elected there's going to be two outcomes in my opinion 
One is there's going to be a huge amount of rioting that will be taking place as a result. Kind of see the groundwork for that being laid out right now. If that were to happen, I think demand is going to surge until the rioting subsides, then demand will return to normal. Okay, and th in that case, I don't think suppliers are going to, to ramp up their production. Again, they're just gonna wait out the and height, heightened demand of all that, and then they're gonna just return back to their normal production because demand is going to go back to what it's been over the past two or three years. If President Trump wins and there is no rioting and everybody just accepts it and moves on with their lives, which is what I would hope would be the outcome in that, in that case, not likely though, I think, uh, then of course demand I think is going to just really flatten out and then supply will catch back up and within about six months of the election, we'll have a pretty good supply of everything back on our shelves. That being coupled with people will need to realize that things are starting to come back into the shops, not to just buy things for the sake of buying things. You sort of get a, a second wave of, uh, of, of what I call opportunity purchasing. It's like I'm, I'm so used to not seeing uh, ammunition on the shelves that now is the opportunity and I better take it because I don't know if when I come back tomorrow if it'll be here. So people will start to have to get used to the fact that they, it's like, you know, bringing a, a, a dog home from the shelter, you know, it's like they destroy all their food because they don't know when they're going to be fed again. But once they get used to the fact that the food's there every day, uh, then that's when they start calming down and just eating normal amounts. I think people are like that in the marketplace as well when it comes off of a period of heightened and panic derived purchasing. So you kind of got to let it slope back down to its to its normal sort of uh, yeah, purchasing behavior from people is what I'm trying to say. So to quickly recap, because I know that was kind of long winded and wordy, if Joe Biden wins, expect very heightened demand and expect manufacturers to react and build up all of their infrastructure, their capacity, and to put a lot more things out in the market to meet that long period of demand. President Trump wins, uh, manufacturing levels I believe will stay the same, although demand will be increased for a small period of time very shortly after the election, at least within 2021 sometime during that year supply and demand will meet back together and we'll have uh, business as usual moving forward and that's my hope. Anyway guys, I hope you found that insightful. If you enjoyed, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button for me. I would really appreciate it. I'm gonna leave you guys off there. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.